Hi YouTube, today we're going to be having a look at upgrading this iMac from 2009. Okay guys, so this is a mid-2009 20 inch iMac. This was only originally released for educational purposes, so this went to schools, universities, so on and so forth. It wasn't widely available to the public. Now this one is a friend's machine and um, he's purchased this from a reclaim company. So um, as standard, this comes with the 2.26 Intel Core 2 Duo. Um, the memory has been upgraded. It did originally come with one gigabyte or two gigabytes of RAM. This one has been opened up and upgraded to four, but we're gonna increase that again. As standard NVIDIA GeForce 9400 256 meg graphics card. Um, below that is the serial number, but that will be greyed out. Um, obviously, it's not my machine, so personal information will be hidden. Um, so, yeah, we'll have a look at the display. The built in display is 1680 by 1050, so it's not quite 1920 by 1080. So, I mean, if this runs 1080 full HD, then obviously it will be slightly compressed. Um, it may be better to run 720p video on here, but we'll see how that performs once we've done the upgrade. And finally, the storage. Um, this looks like this may have been upgraded as well. Originally, the machine should have come with a 160 gig hard drive, but this has been upgraded to a 320 gig hard drive. Going from the Mac App Store, I have made a bootable USB installation disk and we've put um, OS X El Capitan, which is 10.11.6. This is the highest this machine will officially support. You can put a higher version on here, but there is a bit of tomfoolery messing about and you know, obviously we want this to be as stable as possible, so we're going with the recommended OS. Okay, so let's just have a flick around and look at the rest of the specs of the machine and then what we'll do is we'll upgrade the RAM first. Okay, so looking at the back of the iMac, we have the selection of ports on the back. So going from left to right, we have a headphone port, a line-in slash microphone port, we have four USB 2 ports, we have a Firewire 800 port, we have gigabit ethernet and we have mini display port so you can add an extra monitor if you wish to do so and then just below i'll point it out the power there we have a little slot there that is the kensington lock slot so obviously if you wanted to secure this down then you could if you wanted to also part of the storage system here we have the super drive the slot loading super drive so this supports all cds dvds and will write to cds and dvds too and then finally this has the built-in 720p eyesight camera and also built-in microphone right on the top you might be able to make that out okay so without further ado let's get this powered down and we'll get the ram installed Okay, so what we've done is we've put the iMac screen side down on the desk. Obviously, we put a towel down just to protect the screen. We don't want to get it scratched. On the bottom of the foot, it does actually give you the instructions on how to install the RAM. Fairly straightforward. All you need to do is undo the screw in the center of the bar, pull out the tabs, it'll eject the old RAM, and then you just push the new RAM in. But we'll go through that now anyway. First of all, let's grab a screwdriver. Okay, so as the instructions said, here's a little screw. You just undo the screw there. Then this will just pop out like so. Then we have access to the two RAM sticks. Now there are two little plastic tabs. I'm not sure if you can make them out there. They just flick down like so. Then all you do is just literally give them a little pull and the RAM will click forwards like so and then you can just take them out. Very, very simple process. Very easy to do. And uh, it's a shame that Apple don't currently allow you to do this on the iMacs now. Um, if you buy an iMac with RAM, that's the RAM you've got. You cannot upgrade it, unfortunately. So uh, please, Apple, can we go back to this standard and be able to upgrade our machines? Anyway, as I said, we had four gig of RAM in there. So that's two two gig sticks. So they can go to one side. These are PC3 8500. 8, okay, so here's our twin pack of four gig sticks. So we will now put these in and then we'll power the machine up and just make sure everything's all working. And then we can get on to the next step. 
Okay, so once the ram is in, we just tuck these little black tabs back in over the ram sticks so they're out the way. And then with the screwdriver and the bottom plate, we just place that back in position and tighten up the screw. There we go, nice and simple. Okay, so we can see that that has worked perfectly. We now have eight gigabytes of 133 megahertz of DDR3. So next up, we're going to get the SSD upgrade prepared and then we'll take the screen off. Okay, something else that Apple has removed now on their current models, if you do wish to remove the screen, you have to break double-sided tape and then replace said tape when you put the screen back on. Now, these models, um, you can use a simple suction cup and you can just pull the glass off because it's held on with magnets. So I'll show you now using my trusty GoPro suction mount. Um, you don't need anything this industrial to be fair, uh, but it does the job. So all we do is we secure it to the screen, press the clamp down and then literally you just pull the screen away like so. And it is that simple held on with magnets. Now we want to put this somewhere safe so it doesn't get damaged and if you need to what you could do is before you put this back on give this a good buff with a clean cloth get rid of any marks or dirt build up uh, so obviously it's all nice clean streak free for when you put it back on. Okay, so before we continue, if you have done the RAM upgrade, uh, if you're gonna do the SSD upgrade as well, you do need to leave the RAM door off. If you haven't done the RAM upgrade, then obviously you need to take the RAM door off in order to remove the complete bezel once we've removed all of these screws around the perimeter of the screen. Now, to do this, you need a T8 Torx bit. Unfortunately, I didn't have one when I started doing this project, so I've had to go out and buy one. Uh, the smallest one I did have was a T10. So now, T8 in hand, I can undo all the screws and then we can remove the bezel. Okay, so here's a top tip for you. When you take the screws out, put them in the order that you take them out. So what I've done is I've arranged them in a square as they would surround the screen and in this case the four long ones go across the bottom and then the rest of the perimeter are these smaller screws. Okay so once the screws are out pull the bezel forwards from the top of the screen and inside there is this first connector here so we need to disconnect this like so just pulls apart once the connector is disconnected, then obviously just continue pulling the bezel forwards from the top and then it will literally just come straight off and this is what you'll be presented with. So next up, down the edge here, we have one, two, three, four, and the same on the opposite side. We need to remove those torque screws next, then we can remove the screen and get access to where the hard drive is. Okay, so with all the screws down the sides removed, the screen will come out so if you just hold it from the bottom here so it doesn't fall out inside there are a few connectors so we have a pair here and then we also have a pair right down here at the bottom so what we need to do is just pull those apart and then we can take the screen completely out and then we'll have access to the hard drive which is just here also there is a third connector which you'll need to remove to take the screen out and that is this cable here so that one just pulls straight out as well, like so. Also we have the display cable here that is held in with T6 Torx, so we need to remove those as well. And that should lift off, like so. Now we can take the screen out. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to remove these and these, the pins and the rubber grommets. We need to take them out and remember that the orientation is that the um, SATA and power connections are on the lower left corner. So I'll take those off and then we'll show you what we're going to be fitting them to. Okay, so we're going to be replacing the 320 gig hard drive in here with a 480 gig SSD. This is the Kingston model, nice decent premium 
model, three years warranty. There'll be a link in the description below if you do wish to purchase one of these. So what we can do is we can literally connect this to the power and the SATA cables and maybe use some double sided tape to secure it to the back of the iMac. But we don't want to do that, we want to do a professional job. So what we're going to do, we're going to install it into a two and a half to three and a half inch hard drive adapter. Here is the one that we're going to go with. This is a model from Orico, purchased from Amazon. There'll be a link in the description as well for this if you wish to purchase one. Now the reason why I've gone with this particular model is that you can obviously install the SSD into here but then what it does is it provides your SATA and SATA power connectors in the correct orientation to what it would be if it was a hard drive like so. So therefore we haven't got to stretch or stress any of the cables this can literally just drop in as if it was a hard drive. So let's get this all assembled. Okay, so with the SSD out of its packaging, we just offer it up to the ports there, drop it down, push it into place, and then what we do is we just turn over and do the screws up on the bottom. Okay, so we have our SSD and the adapter tray all assembled now. So we have the black rubber grommets down there, the pins, the SSD, that's all screwed in from behind there and then that will literally go in the machine in this orientation giving the SATA connectors down on the bottom left. Okay so now we have the SSD in situ where it's supposed to be we've got the temperature sensor reattached what I've had to do is just put a, a dot of super glue to secure that to the back of the plastic as the um, piece of double sided tape uh, decided to stay stuck to the old hard drive so I've just done it that way. Um, the Saturn power connectors are all connected back up now and obviously everything's secured in with the grommets and the pins and that little black piece of plastic that secures it in place is now back where it should be. So all I need to do now is lower the screen back in place so pretty much um, reassembly is the exact reverse of disassembly. Right, so we've got the screen now back in place and we're going to give it a little bit of a test run. Obviously, we don't want to put all the case and the coverings back on and find out that there's a problem or I've missed a connector. I have double checked everything, but you know, just to prevent sods law, we're going to power it up now. The only thing that isn't connected is the cable that's right up the top here, which goes to the microphone. So that shouldn't pose any problems. So we power up and fans are spinning and there we go now this should give us an error report to say that the hard drive is missing or there's nothing on the hard drive and there we go we've got the flashing folder with a question mark on to say that there's no operating system present so what i'll do now is i'll press and hold the power button turn that off and then what i'll do is i've got the usb installer here for the operating system i'll pop that in the back make sure that boots into that will drop into disk utility and make sure that the ssd is detected and we can format it okay so off we go again so hopefully this should boot up off the usb installer There we go, we've got the Apple logo and a progress bar. Okay, so here we are at the main page to install the operating system. Just press continue, continue, agree. Now it's not recognizing the SSD, so what we need to do is just Okay folks, so the OS is installed, we rang Dish Utility, made a new partition on the SSD, installed El Capitan, uh, done all the updates, everything's working as it should. The responsiveness is obviously a lot, lot better now that we've got an SSD in there and we've doubled the RAM. And just showing a full screen YouTube video, 
of a time lapse I did not long ago on the channel. So yeah, everything works great. This is running at 1080p, so obviously it is compressing the video picture slightly, but it's doing all that on the fly. Everything seems to be great. So there we go. So thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share this video with everybody that you know, and I'll see you all soon.